Sorry. Um, yeah, once again, thanks for taking the time to join. Um, I know that we've been sort of going through these uh, week by week covering off um, different topics and know that it's a, a bit of an investment in people's time, but I hope everyone is getting something um, out of the different parts of it. Um, and just, yeah, wonder if anyone's got any questions um, or wants to have any further discussions locally, uh, more than happy to facilitate that um, and come out and see people or organise anything else that they need. Um, and based on that, I'll guess, Wally, you can probably start with your content and we'll just see if anyone else in as, uh, as you go through. Sure. All right. Thanks. Um, and welcome, everyone. Um, as you already said, um, it's it's we're at uh, part three of our three parter on uh, maximizing configuration management for the modern world. And this one is um, best practices for enterprise software deployment. Uh, my name is Wally Mead. I'm a principal program manager with Cyrusin. Been with Cyrusin about three and a half years after 22 years in, in my, at Microsoft, uh, mainly in the configuration manager product group um, and worked with the product since before SMS 1.0 ship. So been around for a long time and um, I hope you guys have there, uh, repeat um, uh, viewers here. Um, hopefully, you've got a lot out of these pre previous two sessions, and you'll get more out of um, this one. Uh, just a couple. Let me verify. I did click the start recording button, which I did. Yes, I wanted to make sure I did that. Um, um, so, just a couple of housekeeping things for you. These sessions have been recorded, and this one is being recorded. So, if you happen to have missed one of the previous two sessions, you can go up to our Vimeo channel. That would be um, Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O dot com slash Team Cyrusin, all one word, and you'll be able to find the recordings from the previous two webinars that we did, and this one will get posted up, um, not uh, maybe not tomorrow, but uh, Wednesday, um, our time, so late Wednesday for you guys, uh, early Thursday, somewhere in there, should be up for you, so if you need to um, review it again or pass it off to a colleague who wasn't able to attend, that's um, more than welcome. Um, you guys are in listen-only mode. So you're not able to um, ask questions verbally. So if you do have any questions for myself or for Diligent, go ahead and type them into the questions panel that you have there in your go to um, webinar interface. And I'll get to any questions for me at the end of the session because I'm on a single monitor and I don't want to have questions up and get distracted. So I'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So, but please do ask questions, whether it's on this topic or any other topics related to configuration manager or the portal that we'll be talking about later on too. So. All right, so the topic for today is best practices for um, software distribution um, using Configuration Manager. And the reason I put that subtitle on there of using Configuration Manager is that if you guys have been keeping up with Microsoft and their direction, you know that they're spending a lot of time now in the cloud um, and have been for many years now, but they're really um, pushing a lot of management of devices up into Azure as well as up into um, the Microsoft Intune platform. And if you happen to be going through the what's called modern management for Microsoft, they do have a lot of cool things that you can do as far as managing mobile devices, but also your Windows 10 devices um, through the what they call modern management technology. So basically using your Windows 10 laptop or service or uh, other tablet as a mobile device, just using the built-in um, MDM agent in it. So there's some cool stuff that can happen there, but I'm concentrating on configuration manager here through um, today's topic. So. So methods to deploy software. So let's talk about that first. And um, you guys will be familiar with most of these, I think, but there are a couple of new things that you may not be really that familiar with. So first off is the traditional software distribution. That's kind of what it's called, or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as legacy software distribution. And that's the old packages and programs method. Uh, this has been around since SMS 1.0 in various forms, but in essence, it's still the same. Um, so you create a package, create various programs for that package and set your settings on it. And then you go ahead and figure out which program from which package you want to go ahead and deploy to which members of collection. So uh, we'll talk more about these advantages and disadvantages coming up on the next few slides. When C Microsoft released Configuration Manager 2012, back a, a half, almost a half dozen years ago now, um, they added a new type of software distribution technology um, and software management solution that's called application model. Uh, this was again introduced as of the 2012 release and goes forward. Um, and it's their preferred way of doing software distribution in, in configuration manager. Uh, and again, I'll talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages going forward. 
which you may, and those are the two that people are most familiar with in terms of deploying software. But um, you may be familiar with configuration items and baselines as far as checking compliance or um, monitoring configuration drift. However, you can also use configuration items and configuration baselines as a means to deploy software. And I'll talk about that throughout this um, first part of the presentation as well. And this was introduced in ConfigMan 2012 as well. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, there was desired configuration management um, in Configuration Manager 2007. And that is true. Um, and they did call it desired configuration management. However, it was a monitoring um, feature only, even though it said management in the name, there wasn't any ability of remediating or resolving any non-compliance issues. That came around the 2012 release with configuration items, configuration baselines that we'll talk more about. And then what was just recently added um, in the last production release of Configuration Manager, current branch 1706, was the ability of running scripts. And again, you may not necessarily think about that as software distribution as a way of deploying software, but a lot of people actually use packages and programs to kick off scripts as a way of getting something to happen on clients. And this new run scripts feature, depending upon the scenario, can be a much better, much more efficient way to get that job taken care of. And again, we'll talk about that as we go forward. So, so let's go in th through a few slides and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each of those different types of software distribution me mechanisms that I mentioned in the previous slide. So packages and programs. Again, the advantages are you're familiar with it because it's been around forever. You guys have been doing packages and programs when, since whenever you started using SMS or Configuration Manager. It, so it's great for older software and older, I say, executables and scripts. Um, so it's very good for deploying software that maybe doesn't really have um, an installer. Now, you could have a setup.exe. That's fine. Um, but it's more uh, been used a long time when you're writing your own scripts or just running, um, sending out a package and program that would launch off an executable. You can easily import MSI files, so Windows installer files, as your package and programs, and that's great. In fact, it, it's very automated when you do that. It'll create programs for you automatically and so on. Now, the extension there, the .SMS, some of you may not be familiar with that. Um, that's from long ago, and Microsoft was, and a few third parties were also creating .SMS files, which are basically ASCII text files that you would import as a package definition file. In fact, in the real old days, they used to be called PDF files, and that was before Adobe came out with Acrobat Reader and started doing all their PDFs, so, and they registered that trademark, so Microsoft switched over to SMS files as the extension. So an ASCII text file that would load all the package settings and then programs that you wanted to have created, and you would import that and it would, into, into SMS, and it would go ahead and create those automatically for you. Now, Couple other advantages are lots of control over your requirements and your platforms. So you have a requirements tab, you have an advanced tab, you have an environment tab that lets you designate what platforms you want, if you need to run some other package and program first, um, your maximum runtime, and so on. Whether or not a user has to be logged on or can't be logged on, and so on. It supports Windows clients, also Linux and Unix clients. So you can use that same packages and programs technology. And for Linux, Unix, you've used such as tar files as your um, content. Now, a couple of the disadvantages. Um, when you're deploying your software, you have to know which program from the package you want to deploy. So you might have a package that has six or seven different programs in it, and you have to decide for this collection of clients or users, I need to take this program from this package and do my deployment. So if you want to deploy the same package, but three different programs to different people, it's three different deployments that you have to create. So a little more cumbersome. When you're deploying, you usually wanna have a good collection of resources that you're deploying to, which means you have to have some data to group those targets. That's oftentimes based on inventory data. So you're relying on hardware inventory data to provide the data to run your queries in Collection Evaluator to populate your collections. 
Now, there's a couple of downsides to that. One is hardware inventory sometimes can get out of date just because computers um, are offline or their inventory files are too big or there's resync requests happening and so on. So inventory could be out of date. Plus, all the processing to run those, those query rules in your collection memberships is all done on the site server. So it's very CPU intensive on the site server. And it can, depending on what else is going on in your server and the horsepower, it can bog things down a little bit. So that's one of the reasons that Microsoft went to the application model in the Configman 2012 release. So it's great for newer software. Um, so MSI is fantastic. A great way of deploying software, which again, you can do with packages and programs. But the, one of the cool advantages of ap applications over packages and programs, for example, in, for an MSI, is it includes detection methods. So with a package and program, the site server doesn't know if your client has tried to run or has already installed this piece of software that you're deploying to it. It has no idea. So that's why you have to use inventory rules to create collections of those computers that don't already have the software installed. With applications, it's not a big deal. You just say, hey, deploy to this collection. You could even go to all systems, although you shouldn't do that, but you could. And only those computers that are in that collection that don't already have the software installed will try and install it through the detection methods, which some are built in, like an MSI when you import it, others you get to create on your own. There's requirements. Whereas in the packages and programs model, you're doing things on the collection, you're a member of this collection. If you have this much memory, this much disk space, this type of processor, and the software is not already installed, and again, that's all based on hardware inventory and process on the site server. Here, you got detection methods to see if the software is already installed, and you can just add an app or a requirement to your application deployment type that says you have to have this much process, you have to have this operating system, you have to have this much free disk space. Very, very easy to do that, and that's evaluated on the client, not on the server end. So it's better on both ends. You can have dependencies where this application requires some other application to be installed first, and if not, it'll go ahead and do that. But one of the coolest things is that they're state-based. What that means is if you create a, let's say, package and program, and you deploy it, and you make it required, and that software installs, great. Now, the end user of that computer could go ahead and uninstall that, that package and program from their computer because they don't want it, even though you mandated it on there. And configuration manager is not going to push that back out again. With applications, it would. So if you make this a required deployment and the computer meets your requirement rules and it's not already there, configuration manager is going to install that software. If the end user uninstalls it, configuration manager will reinstall it. There's an evaluation um, cycle for applications that will check that state-based nature. And the same thing goes for uninstalls. So if you decide you don't want that software anymore because you're moving to some new or different vendor's product. So you uninstall the old piece of software that you're not gonna use anymore, install the new one. Some end user says, I don't like that new thing, I want the old one back. So then install the new one, install the old one. Well, with the state-based nature, you're gonna go ahead and uninstall that old one and reinstall the new one automatically. So, and when you're doing your deployments, you only have to deploy the application, not the deployment types. You don't have to determine which in the old technology, which program from the package you want to deploy. You just say, take this application and punch it out to all these computers. If it's not already there, if it meets the requirements and so on, it'll go ahead and install. Supports Windows clients, Macintosh clients, mobile platforms, has web applications and so on. So really the platform it doesn't support would be your Linux, Unix clients, uh, but everything else is supported through the application model. Now, a couple of disadvantages there. You have to recreate your older packages and programs. So if you've been using the packages and programs forever, and now you want to move the application model, you have to go ahead and recreate those packages and programs as applications and, and application deployment types. Now, there are a couple of converter programs. Microsoft has one uh, that they wrote, Package Conversion Manager, that can help you out with that. But you do have to do that. But it's great for going forward because everybody does MSIs now. And if you try and get very complex with your deployment types, a lot of requirement rules or dependencies and so on, um, it can be a little troublesome in creating those and getting everything done properly. So just be aware of that. So, it's, But it's great for simple deployments of the few requirement rules and so on. Now, configuration, and you guys are, should be pretty familiar with the applications as well as the packages and programs. But for configuration items and configuration baselines, so it's very easy to create configuration items for scripts. 
So if you want to use a script as your means of deploying software, it's very easy to create a configuration item. Um, now, the script itself may not be very easy to create, so you have to have some scripting knowledge there to create those scripts that you want to use to detect and then deploy your software. Uh, but it is very good for that. It's easy to deploy remediation scripts. So you can have a script that says, check to see if this application is installed by looking at the registry or file system or Windows installer database or whatever it is. And if it's not there, you can you have a script that would go ahead and push out that installation of that software. So very, very easy to do. You deploy them much like you do packages, programs, or applications. You just put a configuration item in a baseline or multiple, and then you deploy the baseline and you choose your target collection. You choose your scheduling, when you want it evaluated, how often you want it to be reevaluated. So very much like the application reevaluation schedule. So that's kind of cool that it has that feature in it as well. Um, and it's very, very easy to create collections from your evaluation results. So you, you've created an, a configuration item and a baseline, you've deployed it, you get the results back, you see you got some non-compliant clients. It's very easy to right click that deployment and say, create collection and pick non-compliance. It'll create a collection for you automatically. Um, and then you could use that actually for deploying a package and program. Uh, very, very easy to do. Now, a couple of disadvantages for newer software deployments, you can only, or for software deployments, you can only use scripts to deploy software. You can't say, if this software is not there, go ahead and run this package and program directly. You have to do that through scripting technology. Or honestly, what a lot of people will do is they'll do a, a evaluation configuration item. So just check to see if software is installed by, again, registry or file system or something. And then if it's not installed, they'll be non-compliant. They'll use that collection thing that I talked about just a moment ago, create a collection of those non-compliant systems, and then deploy that package program or application to the members of that collection to do your remediation. And obviously, if you're doing scripting, you have to have some scripting experience. Okay, the new feature, the, or the newest feature, is the Run Scripts option that uh, they just added in the 1706 current branch release. Um, that's very cool. So the advantage is no packaging required at all. You just create or import your script in the console. Very, very easy to do, provided you know scripting. And if somebody else has created a script for you, you can import that PowerShell script um, very easily. So no packaging required. So no content that you have to push out to distribution points. You do have to approve the script before it can be deployed. So that's a kind of a little safeguard. As, and by default, you can't approve your own script. So somebody else will have to look at your script and then do the approval process. And you'll have an audit trail of who did that. Um, and then when you run the script, which I'll show you here in a few minutes, um, it's, it's basically immediate execution on your target clients, as well as immediate response from those clients in that targeted collection. So very, very cool. Um, get that response back. So if you have real quick things you need to do, for example, some sort of malware pops up and it's related to a SMB 1.0 uh, being enabled in your environment, it's very easy to run a script that will go ahead and turn that off. And this is very, very fast in doing that. So you don't have to worry about the package and programs and creating a script there and then deploying or distributing that content, then deploying and waiting for policies. This is immediate execution for those clients that are online. Now, disadvantages, currently it's only PowerShell scripting. It, you have to know PowerShell or have PowerShell scripts that you can import to do this. There's no scheduling or recurrence. When you pick a collection, you say run now, and it runs now when the clients are online. Uh, but they won't rerun like configuration baselines, or you, can't, you can set schedules for um, deployment of applications or packages or programs. The targeted devices only have an hour to run the script. So if you look at the documentation for this feature, it says you've got that hour. So if a client's not online when you push out this script, you'll have to rerun that script later on for those clients that are online. And obviously you need some PowerShell scripting experience um, to be able to create these if you're going to create them on your own. Now, some best practices, then I'll kick into a little demo for you. First and foremost, whatever procedure or process or method you're going to use, test it in your own lab. So you have to do your due diligence on making sure that you're doing the right things and they're working the right way. So this is the best, best practice that anyone can give you and that you should follow. 
Um, so it doesn't matter if I tell you this or anybody else tells you this. If you don't follow it, then it's worthless for you. But that's going to be your best practice. That'll save you a lot of headaches when you validated things in your lab. You know that they are working properly. Then you move over to production and you should have a great success rate because you've already tested it out on various client platforms with all those proper settings. Now, I didn't mention in here, but although I think you guys probably know, you can use task sequences to deploy packages and applications as well. So you could punch a lot of different software or batch it up in a single task sequence to get deployed if you don't want to do the traditional package, uh, deploying individual packages, programs, or applications. Just put them in one task sequence and, and deploy that task sequence. And that is officially supported by Microsoft as of Configuration Manager current branch. Um, realistically, the best practice is whatever really works for you and you're comfortable in using. So whether you like the old traditional package and programs model and it works, great, keep doing it. If you have time to experiment with some of the other ones, get familiar with them, I would do so because eventually I keep hearing rumors that package and programs will probably go away because um, they like the application model and some of the new methods. So it's very possible that some of these technologies you know today may not be there in years down the road. So you really do want to be familiar with the other technologies and know how to use those just in the event that does happen. Now, I'm not giving you guys any deadline. I'm not telling you it is happening. Uh, I just hear those rumors all the time. And when I was in the product group, um, we talked about that often as to when we were going to kill packages and programs. Uh, and obviously, we haven't yet, or they haven't yet, because enough people are using them. So. And then the last point there, be willing to adopt new strategies or new procedures as you learn from others or new features are introduced to the product, such as the run scripts feature. So be willing to try things out, adopt your procedures, adapt to whatever you need to to stay current and to try out new features or implement new technologies that Microsoft's providing to you just so that you're aware of them. And maybe something you'll find something that works better for you, faster, and more efficient and you can move along with the times. Okay, let's jump over and show you a couple of these things quick, and then we'll jump over to the Configuration Manager portal. So, all right, so here's my environment, and I am running, and make sure I booted the right images, and I have, yep, we're on 1706, so it's the latest release, 1710 has not come out yet, um, so it is still 1706. Um, so the Run Scripts feature is a cool thing that people like. Um, if you haven't played around with it, I'll just show you that real quick. First off, you go to software library, you'll notice I don't have it here in my software library. That's because it's still a pre-release feature. So you do have to go to administration. You have to go and turn that feature on. So if you go to updates and servicing, you have to make sure that 1710 is installed, or 1706, I'm sorry, 1706 installed, because that's a feature of it. And then you go to the features, and you'll see that create and run scripts is pre-release and is turned off. Now, you, I'm not able to turn it on because I've not consented to using pre-release features. So it's a safeguard because they're not fully released features. You have to go and turn that on. So you go to site configuration, go to sites, go to hierarchy settings, and then you go to consent to pre, use pre-release features. So you do that. Now that you've done that, now you can go back to features and you can see create and run scripts. I can right click and turn on. So that's enabled for me. And there's some other things um, that are available for you to turn on, such as this one right here, install behavior for applications. That allows you to, in your application deployment types, to designate blocking programs so that when you try and run the application deployment type, if it finds this, app, this other program running, such as notepad.exe, you can block the installation or the running of that application. And that's something you have to turn on as well because it's turned off. Okay, so once you turn these on, you have to close your console and then start the console back up, and that will turn on that feature so it will appear in the, in the console again for you. So now if you go to software library, here's the scripts feature. I'll just go to scripts, I'll say create one, and I'll say um, create file. And if you drop down a script language, again, it's only PowerShell that's available for you. I don't have one I'm gonna import, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in new item, and then I'll do a C colon backslash, um, demo file dot text dash type and I'll say file and then we'll just do a new or next I'm sorry next and we're all done let me create another one for you real quick when this 
uh, people really like reboot client. Oops, you don't have to spell it correctly, but um, and I'll just say shut down slash R slash T, give it 10 seconds and force it. And we'll go to next, next and close. So I've created a couple scripts. Now to deploy, you go to assets to compliance. You go to your device collection you want to deploy to. I'll take my Windows 7 clients and I'll do a right click and I'll say run script, but it doesn't show, list anything available for me. And that's because they haven't been approved yet. So I do have to go back to approval process to make sure that they're good to go. So you got the approval, it's waiting for approval here as a state. So if I try and right click, the approve deny is not available for me because again, by default, you can't approve or deny your own scripts. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that feature off, which you shouldn't do. So a best practice would be to not do what I'm gonna do here, but I just don't wanna have to log in as another user. So I'll turn off this checkbox down here at the bottom. Do not allow script authors to, to approve their own scripts. So I'll turn that off. Now I'll go back to software library and I'll go ahead and approve. And it makes you look at the script. Now you don't have to, but you, it pops up for you anyway. And you can approve or deny it and put in comments if you want to. And I'll do the same thing for the reboot client. And that looks good. I'll approve. Only approved scripts, scripts obviously show up in the interface. So now when I go back to my Windows 7 clients, now I go to run scripts. Now I can do the, let's do the create file first. So there's no scheduling. It's just pick your script on your on the collection and bingo, it runs. And it's pushing that down to that fast client notification channel. So it's basically immediate execution. So now if I go look at my client uh, and swing over to him, he's right here. There you see the demo file got created already at 428 um, for me. Now I'm gonna leave that guy running. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the reboot and we'll show you how fast that happens. And we'll just do a run script again. And now we'll take reboot client. And let me go to full screen mode so I get to my okay buttons. Next, next, and close. And now if we go look at that client, any second now we're gonna get the, there it is. Um, computer's gonna shut down in less than a minute. So that's it, push that down from the site server through the management point down to that client and executed the create file and there it's rebooting my client. So it's very, very fast execution. The downside, again, your clients have to be registered. Well, they have to be a 1706 client, first place. And they have to be registered with your management point to have the fast client notification channel. Now for monitoring that process, you go to the monitoring workspace and two different things. You can look at client operations and here you'll see run script. And you can summarize these two run script actions like you'd have for discovery, hardware inventory, download policies and so on. Um, or you can just go to, uh, script status and script status. You can see that client seven already ran those scripts and successful as far as script execution state and script output for the create file. It tells me the file that was created there in the past. So, so pretty cool. Um, and just another thing real quick, if you want to look at compliance items. So let me go ahead and create a configuration item. So if you want to go ahead and create a configuration item and do your, Checking there, check for um, toolkit. And I'll say it's a Windows desktop and server app or setting. I'll just leave it for all the platforms so you can designate your platforms. And I'll say I want to look at a, uh, oops, uh, that's not what I wanted. I want to be up here. Check for CM trace. I know I'm not typing great, but I'm short on time. So I'll go to file system and I'll say, I wanna look for a file, the path, hit browse. And by default, it's my computer, but I can go ahead and browse to a client computer if I don't have the file located locally. So I'll connect up to client seven. He should be back up and running. He is from the reboot. And that's gonna be in program files, x86, config man toolkit, client files, and there's CM trace. So that would be an indication that the Toolkit is installed. All right, so I'm looking for that. And now compliance rules, I'm gonna say it must exist. So I can have that must exist. And if I want to, I can even get further along. I can say, I wanna make sure the file version is proper. 
and equals, I can say greater than or equal to, and it's 5.00.7804.1000, if I remember correctly. And I can report non-compliance of this setting is not found. And maybe I'll even change that to new rule and say CM trace check. All right. So I've done that. I've created the configuration item to check for a piece of software. Now all I have to do is add that to configuration baseline. So I go to configuration baselines. I will create a new one. Demo CM trace check. And when I add, I can add in software updates, configuration baselines, or I'll take my one configuration item I have. I'll add it. That's all I have to do to create a configuration baseline. Now I want to deploy it. So I right click and do a deploy. And I can pick other things if I want to. If it does allow remediation, but it's just only WMI or registry or scripts, I can set, tell it to remediate. But here I can go ahead and generate alerts. I can pick my target collection and I'll say all desktop and server clients. And I can have it rerun this every X number of days if I want to, so I can, just in case things change after the fact. So deploy that, and now I have a deployment. Um, it'll take it, a, you know, I can go ahead and tell these clients to, put, to look for policies. So I can go to my all desktop and server clients. I can tell it to, and we'll come back later on and see if we have any results. So now I can tell it to go ahead and pull that, uh, push that policy down to those clients. And the last thing I'll show you, we'll again come back later on in the next demo and look to see if we have any results here. Um, I mentioned creating collections. If I go to deployments, all I have to do is take my deployment, right click and create new collection. And now I, you can see that you can create collections out of compliant, non-compliant, errors or unknown status. And then you could use that test there that I did to say, okay, you guys don't, you're non-compliant. You don't have that application, that software installed. Let me go ahead and deploy a package and program or application or whatever it is to, to that collection of non-compliant systems to get them back into compliance. So we'll come back and look at that guy, give him a little bit to run. So, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and talk about um, how you can go ahead and very easily and securely create and deploy software utilizing our Cyrus and Portal for Configuration Manager. So just real quickly on Cyrus, and you guys have been here for the last couple, so you've already heard these. Um, so we're a software services company, started with Service Manager, created a bunch of apps, which led us to a service management stream or suite of applications on the client side, as well as the um, analyst side. Um, did some asset management to take configuration manager data, put it into um, service manager into a CMDB. So we have great data there. So you can do financial data, contractual warranty status, and so on, location codes on there. And then configuration manager apps. So we have four free apps, very popular ones, are our ticker app, our UDA app, our um, remote manage app. And then the one we're talking about today, which is the um, Cyrus and Portal for configuration manager. Lots of customers throughout the world, um, number of awards we've got and people renew with us because they are very happy with what they've um, gotten from us. And just a number of our different customers. Um, for example, you see Australia Trade Commission down there in Australia under government category. So we have customers again in I think it's 65 countries now around the world. And lastly, almost all of our products sit on top of System Center, um, such as our Cyrus and Portal for Configuration Manager. All right, so um, the Cyrus and Portal for Configuration Manager, if you haven't uh, been in these other um, webinars that I've done and or heard me talk about it before. It's a web-based portal. So that's one of the common requests I got when I was in the Configuration Manager product group in the TAP program was we want a web-based interface and Microsoft never created one, so we've got one now. So we think it's very intuitive and very easy to navigate and get the work done that you want to get done. We grab data from Configuration Manager, computers, users, software, task sequences, reports, and expose those or make those available to you in the portal but we think in an easier to use format so it's faster for your IT team to use that data to resolve whatever needs that they have. With configurable security, so you get a control of which users of the configuration manager portal have access to which pieces of data and which object types. 
Now, not only do we want to expose the data, we want to allow you to use the portal to do your job in configuration manager, which might mean more than just looking up inventory data. Maybe, you ha maybe you're the person, for this example, needs to create software. So you want to be able to create software, applications and packages from the ConfigMan portal. But not only do we want to let you do that, because you can do that in the ConfigMan console, we want to make it easier for you, faster for you to do that with providing enhanced functionality. And you'll see that with the templates I'll show you for creating and deploying software. If you were with us last week, you saw the Commence solution, which is our OSD bare metal or re-imaging solution. So it gives you a user interface to the um, imaging process to allow the IT staff to have some control or make some options available there and pick and choose without having to just have different task sequences to do all your work. And lastly, for reporting, you want to be able to report on what you've been doing as far as software deployments in terms of this session. So you want to make it easier to do your deployments. And I'll show you a couple of dashboards that will help out with that. And we only expose the reports that you need to have access to to the appropriate IT staff members. So that they're not looking at all 477 or whatever the number is now uh, reports available. So we really target this on the middle three personas, the service desk analyst to use the configuration manager portal to quickly find a user's computer, find their inventory data, what software is installed, and then deploy software very quickly and easily. The desktop server support person, maybe they're doing the imaging processes, so re-imaging boxes, or maybe they're going and creating that software that has to be deployed. IT management, they want reports, so it's very easy to create a reporting um, interface for them. So that when they load the CMP, all they would see is the two, three, four different reports that they need to see to get their job done and check on the status. And end users happier, even though they may not use the CMP directly, they're happier because the help desk team or service desk team or whoever created their software, deployed their software, resolved their issue more quickly because it's easier to use than the um, configuration manager console. And you, the admin, you'll likely stay in the ConfigMan console because you know it, you love it, and it's got more features, um, more functionality as far as areas of the product. We don't expose everything. It's software distribution and operating system deployments um, primarily is where we focus currently. Um, so you still have to go over there to manage your patching processes or create your operating system images and so on. But you can still use the CMP to do those quick little one-off things that you need to do and not be tied to your configuration manager console. Okay, let's jump over and show you some of those things quick. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and do a, let's kick off a summarization process of our remediation script, demo CM trace. So let's, you can see down here at the bottom, it says last update, it's been never. So it's never been up summarized. Let's go ahead and force summarization and see if any of my, I think I got four clients running right now as, as far as VMs go. Um, see if anybody has reported back any status yet. And we'll give that a few seconds to run. We'll go ahead and do a refresh and see if we have any status back. Uh, as of yet, nobody has provided back any status. Oh, that's right. Um, that is correct. Let's go and go to control panel because um, this is one of those areas where config manager has that randomization. So after you have, oops, configuration manager, uh, here's the configuration um, item and baseline, but it evaluates over a, I think it's a one or two hour randomization period. So let's just go ahead and say evaluate and then do a refresh. Do we got any? Okay, it's still evaluating. And that'll come back with the status here for us. So let me go ahead and do that on my Windows 7 client as well. Let me go ahead. And, so I have to log back in after rebooting. Let's go ahead and force him to evaluate. Um, I forgot about that script process. Um, it Not script, but the configuration items and baselines. Again, it's, they randomize that. So if you want force execution, there it is. We'll just say evaluate. And do a refresh. Not done yet, so okay. So now we'll get some status back from these clients um, in a little bit, so okay. Sorry about that. So let, while we're waiting for that, let's go back here and we'll load the configman portal. So I'll just go to Internet Explorer. And I've shown you guys, if you were in the first session we did a, a couple of weeks ago, um, this is our dashboard. So the areas that would be important for this topic of conversation would be the lower left-hand corner, which are deployment status information. So it gives me a quick chart 
status of all my deployments. So you can see I've got eight deployments or seven deployments. Yeah, eight. So six of them have unknown status. I have one success and one error. So obviously I don't need to worry too much about the success deployment because it's successful. I'd want to worry about the error deployment and see what's going on with my unknowns. Now, how I would do that is go to the deployments node, and then it's going to show me all my deployments that I have. Um, and by default, it's going to show me only those for the last two days. And here's the configuration uh, baseline deployment. So if I go ahead and drop that interval down, I can say, let's just say all of them that I have. So here you see the error condition. So it tells me the error that I have. Um, I can see I got one computer, it's got that error on it. So I'd want to look at that for remote managed app install going to all servers. Um, here's the successful one. I don't really need to look at that because it is successful. And the unknown ones, you see we do have some success. Um, for example, on this one, Configman Toolkit, I have five success, but I have one computer that's got unknown status. So what we do is we bubble up for you the worst status. Um, so even though I, I have five successfuls, I have one unknown. So that's we classify that as an unknown status. And all I would have to do then is just go ahead and, I know I said don't need to worry about the success, but just click on the, you can click on the hyperlink for the status. And here it shows me a drill in on all the computers um, that have success status. And here's primary. And it was targeted to all these computers in that collection. And here's primary has success for the um, user device affinity. Now, what I want to do is show you how to create software uh, with the time we have left. So let's go to security. So I'll go to security settings. And I've got a, a security role created called app packagers. And I want them to only be able to create software. So I'll go to security rights and I'll load in the app packagers group. And you see that on the new menu, they have the ability of creating software and create applications and packages. But let me go ahead and give them access to the software um, node as well so they can go ahead and see software. And let me go down here to software and just give them global rights to software. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click save permissions. Things are saved. Now, did I load? Uh, okay, so we'll just go ahead and log in here. Um, configuration manager portal. And I'll do user four, which is my which is my application packager. So if I supply the proper credentials, so you see he has the software node. He doesn't have dashboard, doesn't have users, computers, um, task sequences, reports, deployments, events, or anything. He just has software, and he has access to all this different software that I have. And then down on the new menu, he has access to creating software. So you can create an application or create a package. So before we get down to creating new stuff, let's just look at a couple things here. Uh, you see that the Configman Toolkit on the right last column, it says DP status, two out of two. What that means is if I go to distribute content, that this content has been targeted to two distribution points and it has been successfully, oops, he doesn't have access to doing that, sorry. I didn't give him rights to doing that, manage that. But we can go down to the distribution points here. And even though he can't manage, you can see that it's got the two distribution points. Whereas the next piece of software, some of these other ones have zero out of zero. So if I had rights, I could do a distribute content. So if I switch back over to my full admin and go to my software node and take that same piece of software, now I have distribute content and now I'll be able to see all my distribution points and distribution point groups and what my status is of those. So you see that it's been targeted to two different distribution points and it says distribution complete. If I take another one, and I could remove software from there as well, if I want to take like the ticker app admin, I can right click it and distribute content because it's targeted to nobody right now. And I'll say, I can go to distribution point group if I want to. I think I've got both my distribution points running, so I'll go ahead and pick both of them. And that kicks off the request and configuration manager to go and distribute that content out to my distribution points. And those will appear here. And right now it still says zero out of zero. As it gets response back from configuration manager, that will go ahead and update. Now it says two zero, so it's targeted to two and neither have, we don't have back status that we've done that yet. It's been complete. They're not very, that's not very big, so it shouldn't take very long for that status update. Okay, so you can do that on your software. Um, obviously deploy software, we'll look at that later on. You can retire it if it's an application, you can delete it, 
set properties or change permissions on who can see that software. Let's go through the creation process. So let me go back to my app packager. I could do this as a full admin as well, but we'll use the app packager role. So I'll go to new and let's create an application first. So we'll do a software application. And my application, um, first thing we're gonna have to do is pick our software source. So our, our software target share. This is an intermediate share that we use to take the source files package them up a little bit that we need to do, and then get them replicated out to your distribution points. So I created three of them, common software, just workstation software and server software. I'll say this is gonna be common software. Um, so we'll go ahead and leave common software. Now I pick my source file, which can be an MSI or it can be um, EXE. So I'll take Google Chrome as an MSI. So let's go ahead and load it in. You see it reading the information. It reads it as a Windows installer. Here's the, um, looking for the deployment type. So it's got that. Now if we go to next, so it read information for the manufacturer of the application, the version, it created a install and uninstall command lines for me automatically, but notice no distribution points are selected and no requirement rules are set at all. Now let me go back here and let me load a template. So let me load a workstation template. So I'll select it and load it. And now you see I've got one distribution point selected and it happens to be client DP, so you see member is selected, but not primary, because it's in data center DPs. If I go to requirement rules, you can see there's a couple of requirement rules in here. In fact, I probably wanna remove that one since I've already got it in the next one. So I can go ahead and modify things that were in those um, templates. So that's some settings that were set. Now let's go back here and let's change this to the server application template and show you some of the differences. Again, just to show you the power of the templates. Um, and now we'll see client DP is not selected. So member's not there, it's primary. So I'd set um, primary as the distribution point for server applications and member is the distribution point for workstation applications. And my requirement rules, and so I got server or server platforms now, as well as um, uh, total physical memory. So I can go ahead and modify any of these things I want to. It's got a detection method based on the MSI file. I can configure supersedence if I want to. I could do that in my template, but you probably wouldn't do that because um, you, templates would be applicable for all applications. I could configure dependencies if I need to, um, requirement rules as you saw, and I can go ahead and configure distribution settings like allow this application to be installed as part of a task sequence. So I go ahead and configure those as I want, click finish, now that's creating this application from inside Configuration Manager, and it was Google Chrome, if I remember correctly. So let me go ahead and refresh and see if it's done in Config Manager. And not quite done in Config Manager. Let me refresh again, so we should see. Okay. Uh, there we go. Now we see Google. It says it is targeted to one distribution point. It's not completed there yet. Uh, but it is targeted to one distribution point. What was the one we did earlier? Ticker app admin. There you see it's two out of two now, where it was two out of two slash zero before. So, but it will get out to that distribution point momentarily. It's not targeted to anybody. It's an application. So I do have a, I have a deployment type. You see it's a Windows installer distribution type and it hasn't been deployed at all yet. That's all the harder it was to create an application. It's very, very simple to do that based on an MSI or EXE, um, especially with the templates to help customize those different, all the different settings that you want. Now let me show you a uh, package process, create software package. That's very, very simple to do as well. A couple more things you have to do, but uh, so I'll take that same common software. Let's go ahead and we've already got that. So let's go ahead and take DCM authoring tools. Another MSI, it's easy to do. So again, it read information from the MSI file. I'll select a template. I'll say this is workstation software. I'll load that template. And now on the package tab, we'll see that it has my distribution point, client DPs is selected. So the, as a DP group, it already set persist content and client cache. I don't think I changed anything here. And distribution settings allow download content with packages assigned to distribution points. So those are settings that were set automatically by the um, template. 
And now for my programs, by default, we create an install and uninstall, or we assume you want an install and uninstall, you just have to specify your command line. So if for something like a MSI, it's very easy to just hit browse and browse to your MSI file. And it's gonna go ahead and create a install command. So MSI exec slash I, the file name slash QN with some other parameters. Now, if you don't remove the uninstall program, you'll have to give it a command line as well. So let's go ahead and give it. And we'll just go ahead and take a same MSI, but now we're gonna go ahead and add the slash X parameter in there to remove that software. So we went ahead and created that with the slash X to remove that software. And you could even add your own command lines if you want to. So maybe you want another command line that doesn't do a silent install, but the prompted install for the end user. You can do that. And now that we've done that, you can see there might be some requirements uh, that were set. In this case, any platform's not set. So my workstation applications would have set um, Windows, oh, there we just passed Windows 7. There's x64 Windows 7 client. And it would also have my Windows 10 and Windows 8.1 clients. Select, oops, there's, there's 8.1, there's Windows 10 set automatically. And whether or not a user's logged on, nothing on advanced, and I don't think I put anything else in any of those. So, so again, very, very easy, especially when you're utilizing the templates to help answer all those questions or set all those values for you appropriately. So that was um, DCM authoring tools. Again, it's not gonna be there yet. So if I go ahead and do a refresh, should be there it is already. And you see Google, Google Chrome has been distributed out to my distribution point. It's doing the same thing now for my um, MSI for uh, the DCM authoring tools. Now, just to show you this really does do something in Configuration Manager, if I go back to the Config Man console, and now I go to Software Library, Application Management, Applications, you don't see Google Chrome here because I told it to create new software from the CMP in a folder called CMP. So there's Google Chrome, and we look down here, you see it's targeted to the distribution point and, and successful. And same thing with my packages. You don't see the package here for DCM authoring tools that I have put in the CMP folder. And there it is. And it's right now in progress, uh, distributing out to the distribution point. I would guess if I hit refresh now, it's probably done. No, not quite yet. Oh, it's going out to the second distribution point. So um, um, that was a workstation one. So it's going out to my distribution point, which would be the uh, member server. So not on the site server. So it'll take me a moment to get out there. So very cool. Um, so now let's go see if we got any status back on the um, deployment here. And then I'll kick back on the CMP in just a moment. Let's do another run summarization of this um, configuration item and baseline that we deployed. So we've got a few minutes left. And let's do a refresh. Okay, now we get some status. You see you got 33% compliance. So 33% compliance and got four computers that are unknown. You know, I've got a couple others that are running and the other two are not running. So, but I didn't force the remediate or the policy on them. So now if I go back to my assets and compliance, go to my baseline, here's the baseline, here's my deployment. Now they got some results. I can go ahead and do a right click and say, create new collection. And if I wanted to do unknown computers or non-compliant computers, or in my case, I only have the two compliant computers, so I'll do that. So it's gonna give you the long name. Um, based out of desktop and server clients. Membership rules is going to be looking for compliance. And just have it create that collection. And it should be primary and client seven, where the two computers that I forced the uh, running of that um, configuration baseline on. So now if I go to my device collections, there's that device collection that got created. And it's got two members by show members. There you go, client seven and primary. So that could very just as easily been the non-compliant computers. And once I have my collection of non-compliant computers, then I could go ahead and do a deployment of an application, a package or task sequence or whatever that would then remediate and install the appropriate software out on that computer again. So, okay, we don't need this log file here. Um, so now that I've done a so created a couple of pieces of software, let me just walk through the software deployment process real quickly for you. Um, I can't do that as a um, as a app packager. So if I take a piece of software and I right click, 
the deploy software is grayed out and I don't have it available as a new. So I, I can create new software, I can't deploy software. So I'll just go back to the full admin and go back to our software and let's do a refresh. And let's take, oops, refresh, I didn't refresh. Um, do refresh, so we'll get um, DCM authoring tools. So it's, it's a very quick um, deployment. So now we just go ahead and do a right click and deploy software. And what I'd probably do is a quick software deployment. So the scenario is the end user calls up help desk and says, hey, I need this piece of software. Um, what they would do is, let's say it is um, computer seven. Again, these online. So I'd go to uh, client seven. I'd verify that you don't have the DCM authoring tool software already installed. It's not. I'd verify that you don't already have it deployed to you. You don't. I would right click, deploy software, quick software deployment. And it was DCM authoring tool, so I'll just select it. I don't have to worry about collections. We'll create a collection automatically for you. Uh, there's my client computer I want to deploy to, client seven, which could be users as well. But I'll just take that one client that um, for the end user that was calling in. And on my deployment tab, I have to select the deployment template. This is going to be, um, let me say, workstation package. Um, and we hide all the other tabs for you. All you get to do is set the time and when it should be available. And you can say initiate client policy download. And bingo, that has well, it's now creating a collection and configuration manager with the deployment of that piece of software. So if I go back, look at config manager now. Um, and if I do, well, before I do that, if I do a refresh here, um, I'll get a new deployment. There we are, DCM authoring tools. There's a new deployment in here. And if I go to the dashboard, we'll see now that it, uh, I have seven pieces of unknown software. They don't have status for them. But now if I go to the config man console, I created a new device collection. And again, I've had it put in a custom folder called CMP. There is that collection. And it has one member, which should be um, client seven. So there's client seven. Oops, go back to the collection. And then here's our deployment of DCM authoring tools. So it's very, very simple to go ahead and um, create software using the CMP, provided you provide the um, user, the IT staff writes to do that. And it's very easy to deploy software utilizing the configuration manager portal as well. And we think it's an easier process to go through than with the, with the native configuration manager console. Because again, I, you can limit the nodes that they have access to. You can limit the devices or users or software, task sequences, reports, whatever that they have access to. So they're not seeing everything. They're only seeing what they should be seeing. For example, my IT staff, I'd probably only have them doing the workstations. They'd only see the three workstations that I have. And so they wouldn't see the servers and couldn't deploy software to the servers. So hopefully that gives you a quick little run through of what um, um, Configuration Manager portal can do in terms of creating and deploying software. So this is a recap and then we'll get to your questions. That there, hopefully there are some questions in the queue for us. Um, and if not, go ahead and start typing them up now. Um, System Center Configuration Manager is great. That's why I've been with it for 20 some years because I just love the product and you should not be running anything other than current branch. So make sure you're on current branch. And if you want to do that run scripts feature, you got to be on 1706, which is the latest. There are numerous ways to get software deployed in your environment with Configuration Manager. The traditional or legacy packages and programs, the newer application model, um, configuration items and baselines. You may not have thought about that before, but hopefully um, seeing that or, or hearing about it anyway, help open your eyes a little bit to that process and how you can do that. Task sequences, you probably done that before, and that new run scripts feature that's available. Find what works for you, get really good with it so it does meet all your needs. Adapt as necessary, so be flexible. As also be aware of the fact you may need to use more than one deployment met methodology. So you may want to use that run scripts feature for doing those quick little one-off things, but you may not want to, um, you may want to use applications for really deploying your software. But there'll be times when it's faster for you to do a run script if it's, instead of packaging up a PowerShell script and deploying it out as a packaging program, just go ahead and do, create the, import it as a scripting, the software library, and then deploy it to your collection. Very, very simple, easy to do.
and then to help you extend your reach of Configuration Manager in your IT environment, look at the Cyrus and Portal for Configuration Manager. It is very, very easy and safe to go ahead and um, deploy, create and deploy software with it. If you like what you saw as far as the Cyrus and Portal for Configuration Manager, um, you can use the URL at the bottom of the screen. Just go to cyrus.com config manager dash portal, and you'll be able to download a community version. Now with the community version, I'll let you know you can't create anything that affects Configuration Manager, which would be software. You can't deploy software. Um, so you can't create applications or packages. Um, you can't look at deployment status the same way I showed you. You can look at your client inventory. You see all your clients, all your users, all your software. You just can't do a lot with them. You can create your security roles in the CMP and get familiar with it. But to really test things out, you'd want to go to that same link and you can request a trial key. So you take that community edition and punch in that trial key and that gives you 30 days of unlimited use of the CMP in your environment uh, with nothing restricted other than the fact that it's not going to work out for 30 days. And then if you like what you see, you can purchase the a, a full license for it and then you can just implement that and it will keep all your stuff that you've done, keep all your security settings, all your templates, everything you've created. Um, and you can go forward with that. So, all right, with that, it is time for Q&A. Let's see what we have in the queue. Uh, let me go to questions and see what we got there. Um, this will be available. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, thanks, Joe. So just so we get them in the recording. So yeah, all the sessions are, have been recorded and they all will be up on the Vimeo site. Um, so just for reference, I can show you that if I go to, inter, uh, launch off uh, edge and if I go to vimeo.com I get my questions out of the way so I can there we go vimeo.com slash team Cyruson oops Oop, oops that didn't work out vimeo.com team Cyruson so you can go there and then you'll find all the webinars there so here you see some part ones. Here's the one I, part two that I did with um, the IllegeNet a couple weeks ago and part one down there. So you can just go to that that URL. So vimeo.com slash team Cyruson and you'll be able to find the recording. So this one will be posted up there in the next day or so. Um, okay, then David is asking, what would I recommend for instances where you need to deploy a new version of Java, but the installation will fail because Internet Explorer is running? Ideally, we don't, want to prompt the user but if we but if we have to we can uh, yeah there's always going to be those type of scenarios where you have um, software that's running and so on so what I would probably do there I would probably use that new feature that configuration manager has uh, that they added in in the um, uh, that I kind of alluded to so let me go back over to config manager portal or console and so go back to Configuration Manager Console and then go to Administration, go to Updates and Servicing, Features, and Install Behavior for Applications, and then turn that on. Give that a moment to process, and then I'll restart the Configuration Manager Console and see if I left that long enough. Then what I would do is go to my software library and take my application. Um, Let's just take the one we created here, Google Chrome, and go to Properties. Go to your deployment types. Pick your deployment type. Edit. Oops, I didn't wait long enough. So let me go ahead and cancel that and close the console. Um, it didn't um, hasn't added in that new feature yet, the install behavior. Hopefully, I remembered. I'm pretty sure I turned it on. Uh, but it does take a moment for the configuration manager recognize that and restart the console to show it. So I'm sure it'll be there now, unless I forgot to turn it on, but I think I did. Deployment types. There you go, install behavior. So this new tab, um, install behavior. So what you could very well do is then go ahead and um, I explore.exe if that's what it is. Uh, now, so when you do that, what's going to happen now, it, it depends on how you deploy your application. 
in this case. Um, if you deploy it to users as an available application, then when they get this application, try and run it from Software Center, um, and it sees that ieexplorer.exe is running, it's going to prompt them saying, hey, you can't install this app because Internet Explorer is running. Um, if you shut down the app, we can continue with the installation. Or if they abort it or you know, cancel, basically, it'll give you a requirements not met um, failure um, on your deployment. If you deploy it as a required application, then when you deploy, you have an option there. Uh, so let me go ahead and... Uh, what did I do? Um, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I didn't give it a second one. So I'd want to have another um, deployment type in there that um, uh, allows for not having that application there. So that's why it's not liking that. Um, but when I would go and do a deployment then, deploy that software and pick my collection. If I make it a required one, then you'll have a setting there. Um, I got to give it a distribution point. Now, if I make this required, um, user experience, um, there's a setting now. I don't have since I don't have it listed here. Um, it doesn't show up in there, but deployment. But there's an option there to, to tell it to prompt the end user to close the application, um, and then you'd be able to configure that so that they would you can force it to on a required deployment you can force it to close the application then install or you can force uh, you can say oh if it's running automatically abort the installation um so yeah that's how it works um if you make it a required application and um it would when you deploy it if um if it's required if the app's running then it will fail um, if the app's not running, it'll go ahead and run. But there, you have that option there when you're doing that. So the, in the application deployment type, that tab is called install behavior. So the, the tab is install behavior. But you, again, you only get that when you turn on that as a pre-release feature, or a, not a pre-release feature, um, as a feature. It's not turned on by default. So you would have had to install them. Um, um, this was a tech preview feature for a while. Um, and now it's in the code. So you have to be in a version that has this as a release feature and turn it on as a release feature. Then go to your application, your deployment type, and it's install behavior. So I'll just show you that real quick again there, Dan or David, and then uh, we'll move on. So properties, deployment types, and then install behavior. That's the new tab you'll get when you have that turned on. Okay, good, good. All right, um, I don't see anything else in the queue, so does anybody else have any final questions before we close this out? Um, while you guys are thinking and um, considering typing, um, it has been a pleasure to chat with you guys uh, over these three different webinars. Hopefully you found them uh, beneficial and, and worthwhile um, and you got you know, it helps you out. Um, what I'd always thought uh, when I was doing training, I'd always tell people, if you can pick out one thing a day in the training class that you can take back and implement, then you consider that a successful training because you, you have found something that you can go back and implement and make your environment better. And whether it's making you more efficient or making um, your environment better, whatever it is. But if you found something you could you could implement over these three sessions, then it's been worthwhile for my aspect. So, so hopefully you guys have found that to be the case. Um, thanks to Joe and the Dilgenet guys for helping co-sponsor and, and partner with us on this. And if you have any uh, questions for them, then you can contact them at dilgenet.com and be able to get to um, get access to them and um, do anything you need to do with those guys locally. So they're a great partner of ours out there in the Australian market. So I don't see anything else coming in. Yep. Go ahead. I was just going to say thank you, Wally. I, I, once again, um, thank you for taking the time to, to run these sessions for our customers. And if anyone's uh, got anything, yeah, reach out via our website. All our contact details are there. Very cool. Okay. So I see nothing else in the queue, so I'm just going to go ahead and end this for us. So thank you, thanks again, everybody. You guys have a fantastic um, Tuesday. 
um, out there in Australia, and um, we'll get this um, ended, and we'll get the recording up on the website, the vimeo.com slash Team Cyrus Insight in the next day or so. So thanks again, and good luck to everybody. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you.